Hey, good afternoon, it's Max. Uh, this is gonna be part two of our total steering upgrade installation video. Um, in the part one, we showed you how we uh, applied a special thread locking agent to the top crown nut to secure it and make it virtually impossible for it to ever come loose again. And at the same time, we also showed you how we would install the floppy bushing eliminator kit that we're gonna have for sale here. And now we're gonna show you uh, how to install the Traction Dynamics uh, tracks right tie rod and uh, so we're kind of halfway into this installation um, if you watch part one of the video we kind of show you how to open this cover up and, and remove the console and the decorative plastic cover uh, <clears throat> removing a tie rod uh, is only requires a 17 millimeter socket or wrench if you want to go very very slowly but uh, sockets preferred so that you're less likely to nick your body work um, we have our new wrench, it's just arrived today. This is a very flat 14 millimeter wrench that we'll uh, use, that we're gonna supply with the Traxxrite tie rod. And what it does is it allows you to get in <coughs> and hold the wrench flat between the tie rod and the upper clamp, uh, whereas a normal wrench won't fit there. So removing the stock tie rod um, is very simple up here. You're gonna pop off this decorative rubber cover. It's just a decoration. It looks like a fancy knob, but it's just a rubber baby buggy bumper. And uh, from there, an extension and the wrench. <coughs> the wrench will come you know, from inside to hold it. You may have to move the steering left or right. This is kind of the way that's gonna be removed up to here with the wrench. That nut's removed. Um, and I had showed you, I want to, I put this back, I wanted to show you the small problem here is uh, it's easier without that back handlebar bolt in because uh, you can't really get a straight shot at this nut. So it's easiest if you have this outer or rearward handlebar bolt removed. Careful with your hardware because it'll keep saying it over and over, the bike will eat it. Um, you can loosen this bolt, handlebar will slide up, snug it back down, it stays out of the way, makes it easier to work. Um, the tie rod, the stock tie rod, you know, will just drop out. You may have to wiggle things a little bit, but it, it just drops out. You pull it out of the bike, no problem. Um, feed that to your dog, you let him bury it in the yard. Um, uh, here's the traction rod. We got a nice company decal on it. We would appreciate if you installed that forward on the bike. Um, this rod is a fixed length, so you don't have, uh, have to worry about any form of adjustment. We're going to show you how to square your steering, or I've showed you how to square your steering in another video, but I'm going to reiterate that here when I talk about all this. Um, so you simply put the nuts on to the tie rod. All right. And, uh, and then tighten the hardware. So since it's hard to see where the wrench flats are, you can just kind of walk this around gently um, a couple times, walk it around slowly until you feel the Feel the tie rod engage on the wrench, and usually once it bites, it's pretty, it's pretty good there. I haven't got it on there yet. I guess I need my old man glasses. It fits nice and snugly. It is right up tight against it, so I'm just saying, so you know. All right, <clears throat> and uh, so you'll tighten these nuts. Um, I'm just doing this for expeditiously. If you hopefully you have a torque wrench, you can come back and touch these with a torque wrench. So 
I'm just going to pretend I tighten this one for purposes of conversation to make the video move faster. You'll put your decorative knob back on. Uh, put your handlebar back. Um, and then decorative cover goes on here. Um, there are just two screws that hold it down. Um, you've so you want to be very careful installing the two screws. You don't drop those in the bike. And uh, from there, I'm leaving the semi disassembled. This goes back as reverse of the, the order we talked about in the first video. Uh, this slips under. The console slips under. You snap the nose down, slide it backwards, and um, and then there's your two five millimeter Allen bolts to go in this hole and a pop rivet pin that goes in there. These snap down, close the cover, and you're basically done. Now there's two more steps. Um, the first one is adjusting uh, any lash on the left tie rod. Now people are, their first and gravest concern, all the engineers are gonna start doing backflips around the room here. Um, that our tie rod is fixed length on the right. The right hand tie rod controls the bike, left hand tie rod does not do anything. All right. Now, in our case, on, on a stock bike, we have installed a rigid mount bushing. So now these two rods, since all four of the tie rod ends are rigidly mounted, could be affecting each other. Okay, so without one of them isolated, one of the four isolated, it could be affecting each other. So it's very simple. Um, you come to the left rod, it takes a uh, uh, 14 millimeter wrench and an 8 millimeter wrench. There is a flat in the center. I will show you. So one of the nuts is standard thread, one is reverse thread. You pull the little boot back, there's the adjusting nut. In the center, there's a wrench place for a wrench flat where you grab it with uh, an 8 millimeter wrench. Uh, the opposite one is in the rear. Can you see? There's the nut there. All you have to do is uh, break the two nuts loose and they'll go the same direction because one is reverse thread. Once you break them loose, you can take the barrel adjuster with your fingers. If you move it one way, you're going to lengthen the rod and it'll tighten up, it'll stop. If you do it the other way, it'll come loose again, go the other way, and it'll be pulling the tie rod ends together, and it'll tighten the other way. Just to count, one, two, one, two, wherever it is, put it in the middle, it's good enough. Hold it steady with a wrench, lock one side down. All right, lock one side down first, okay? Now the next thing is important, pay attention to this step. Uh, you lock one down and it just doesn't matter where it is. You're holding the adjusting rod to that end, just tighten it. Now what you want to have is the two tie rod ends be basically level to each other, like this. These are actually slightly out, but this doesn't matter, it's fine. What you don't want is them to be you know, 30 or 40 degrees apart. So the second rod, you wanna kinda of line it up with the first and then you're gonna use uh, two wrenches, one on the wrench flats, all right? you know one here you can use that 14 we supply you too so so you want to tighten the second one but I'm here don't worry about holding the eight anymore do this when you finish when you rock it it should basically be working as a flat kind of parallel unit there all right so that's all there is to that by the way if you skip that step it just doesn't matter honestly it does not matter this tie rod, we know the reason we're replacing it is these ends are kind of low quality and they wear quickly. And these are the ones that have the mechanical slack in them that we're trying to get rid of. If this rod has any accelerated wear in it, we don't care, right? So this rod is on there for the worst case scenario in the you know billion to one chance that the right tie rod breaks, fails, or falls off. That's going to be there to save you. And if it has a little slack in it, we don't care. We just don't want it to have three inches of slack. A couple of, you know, five millimeters, who cares? It's fine. You'll be able to drive your bike fine. The last step is uh, go check out another video I did showing how to align your steering. And which, with the fixed tie rod, we're going to align the steering in here 
using this large bolt on the steering yoke. So the steering yoke has some slack and what you're going to do is take the steering bridge lock pin, which I don't happen to have handy with me at the moment. Anyway, I've shown the steering bridge lock pin on a bunch of uh, other videos. You'll come down, put your steering bridge lock pin into the front of the bike here, as we've demonstrated in 10 different videos. Loosen this uh, 19 millimeter nut, and this got a bolt has a 17 millimeter head. Then the steering will be able to toggle slightly in relation to the wheel. That's where you're going to align your steering to optically to your eye so that the handlebars are perpendicular to the front wheel. That's all there is to it. Tighten that nut back down uh, really tight. Make sure you torque it. And, uh, and that's it. Left tie rod, again, we don't really care about. So that's kind of the whole total steering system upgrade. So that's the new tracks right. Um, one piece fixed length aerospace quality uh, tie rod installed on the bike. Steering crown nut locked so that it'll never back off on you, you know, 10,000 miles down the road. A solid mount bushing installed so that in the unlikely event the right tie rod ever fails, you'll be able to drive your bike normally. And then your steering and handlebars aligned perfectly perpendicular to your front wheels so that as you go down the road, everything looks straight and square and normal. So <laughs> that's everything. That's it for part two. Thanks for watching as usual. If you have questions, you can find me maxattraction.com or you can ask right here on my forums and I'll answer them. Um, a lot of these videos are up on the gl1800riders.com forum and I have a ton of stuff posted there. So uh, please subscribe to my channel, tell your friends, and uh, I'll look for my next video soon.